heavy construction, the Olympian returns with a new cargo, a state-of-the-art submersible platform nicknamed the Sinker, very supplies and workers to the sea floor, fathoms below. Without question, Bioshock is a series that, if nothing else, is intensely divisive. Some loathe the franchise for its lecturesque, finger-wagging themes. Some have bemoaned what has been perceived as broken promises after early gameplay demos showed grandiose play, only to have the final experience be, more or less, by the numbers. I've even read multiple complaints that a certain title had too much combat. <laughs> From my perspective, I love this series with the fullest extent of my stone-cold heart, which is why I wanted to produce the debut Covert Guerrilla Handiwork with Bioshock as its subject matter. Why then are we looking at the second game instead of the first? Two reasons. First, I have a soft spot for dark horses. Second, I feel like enough people flick their sausage nipples about the first and third game. They ride or deride Kenneth Levine's unit, and little buddy number two gets lost in the shuffle. Is it perfect? No. Is it an underrated classic? Everything you touch turns to shit. Written and directed by Jordan Thomas and developed by 2K Marin, Bioshock 2 was released on February 9th, 2010 for the PC, PlayStation 3, and the Xbox 360, and a few years later on Mac OS X. Scores were generally positive, with a Metacritic average of 88 out of 100. Once again, set in the underwater dystopian city of Rapture, the player controls Subject Delta, a hulking big daddy that existed before the fall of Rapture. The opening cinematic shows Subject Delta being deprived of his little sister, Eleanor, after her mother, Sophia Lamb, uses a mind control plasmid to force Delta to put a pistol to his head, his helmeted head, and forces him to shoot. Fucking shoot. <laughs> Ten years pass, and Subject Delta is revived by a group of little sisters under the influence of Eleanor. Your overarching goal from this point on is to locate and reconnect with Eleanor. Otherwise, you will cease to exist. From here, you are entangled in the agendas of the Rapture family, a group of once illustrious denizens helmed by their leader and main antagonist, Dr. Sophia Lamb, a brilliantly manipulative Rapture elite that has seized the reins of the city in the wake of city founder Andrew Ryan's golfing accident. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! The first thing I look for in a game, and this is sadly underutilized in so many titles, is presentation and atmosphere. I always use the first Mass Effect game as a shining example of first impression. When the startup menu boots, there is an immediate sense that you're involved in something special and vast. With Earth looming prominently, the beautiful song Vigil plays, and the menu is appropriately science fiction. Instant immersion, and it never let go. The effect of atmosphere can be partly attributed to personal preferences. If you don't normally enjoy science fiction, Mass Effect probably won't churn your butter. As it relates to Bioshock, the collapsing civilization under a decaying Art Deco veil is second to none. Though largely similar to the first game, Bioshock 2 had me immersed throughout the entire duration of the campaign. Every costume, environment, weapon, sound effect, and warning scribbled in blood had me in... Rapture? Next, the graphics. Still running on the Unreal 2.5 engine, the same as the first title, Bioshock 2 isn't going to blow anyone's mind in 2019. Frankly, it wasn't all too stunning in 2010 either. However, being that this game is nearly a decade old, I'm not looking for 
uber realistic textures as much as I am frame rate stability and art style, most importantly. I'm playing the PlayStation 4 remaster that came with the Bioshock collection on a PlayStation 4 Pro, and I never noticed a significant drop in frames, even during intense battles where the effects were high. The gun fights all felt smooth, and I never felt like I was playing a lesser version, though naturally a strong PC would run the game in its maximum potential. I appreciate a strong graphics engine, sure, but I'm not a snob and I couldn't care less if I'm getting 120 FPS versus 60. My main concern with visuals is style. You can have frictionless, oil slick gameplay, but if you don't have substance or heart, then I really don't give a care, pardon my language. This is why Doom 2016 is amazing and Black Ops 4 bores my tears to tears. Thankfully, Bioshock 2 delivers on this front, and I never tired of exploring each location, scouring for resources and audio diaries. From the grimy underbelly of Pauper's Drop, the once high-end halls of the Sinclair Deluxe, to my personal favorite areas in Ryan Amusements, I felt a tremendous sense of wonder exploring an older, crustier, shittier part of Rapture. Whereas the first Bioshock was a trek through a recently wounded but still potentially salvageable metropolis, the second game feels like I'm wandering through a husk. This place is fucked, and there is no coming back. The rest is pure survival. I was born to change the world. Yes. And when Mummy returns home, the world will be very different indeed. She will make it ready for you. Now, sound. To me, a game is like a nice body. Sprinting and climbing is performance and playability. Oily muscles and a nice butt are the graphics. The endocrine system is the story and the skeletal system is the sound. Certainly the human anatomy and physiology therein are infinitely more complex, but you get the idea. You can have a really nice set of biceps on you, but what fucking good are these if your bones are glass? Sound in gaming is critical, often an afterthought, and it's one of the many things that Bioshock 2 nails. As in the first title and afterwards with Bioshock Infinite, the main score is composed by Gary Scheiman of Revenge of the Nerds 3, the next generation fame. The peppy jingles of Rapture, the classical jazzy pieces, the often frantic strings all tidied up at the bottom by a dark atmospheric composition that reminds you that you are not alone, nor are you safe. Each character is acted by a pro, and I always look forward to my next audio diary or character interaction. Speaking of which, it's thrilling to interact face to face with the characters that both support you and want you dead. In certain scenarios, you even get the option to decide their fate, which will affect the outcome of the story down the line. Your call, friend. Grace is unarmed for what it's worth. Guns sound chunky and meaty, from the rivet gun and the 50 caliber machine gun to the gruesome, heavy, grinding drill. I admire small touches, like your adopted little sister commenting on your weapon upgrades. Even daddy's toys have toys. Enemies yell frantic, often hilarious lines to alert you of their presence and subject Delta's heavy footsteps and grunts of pain during combat sell his immense size and weight. Speaking of combat, Bioshock 2 just feels right. Delta can dual wield a plasma slash weapon combo, 
instead of having to switch between the two as you did in the first game. Enemies are suitably challenging and varied, and the action lasts just long enough to be satisfying without overstaying its welcome. Gameplay in general just feels quicker and streamlined, and the pacing is much better as a result. You now use a video camera and fight a baddie as you record, instead of the single shot camera of the first. Although better, I still got super tired of this mechanic, and honestly I'm glad it was taken out of infinite. And on pacing, Bioshock 2 trades the first game's notoriously dull hacking puzzle minigame with a real-time sequence based on anticipated button presses. If you miss a color, you get shocked. If you hit red, you get an alarm. Green is a pass, and blue nets you a little something something extra. Whereas I eventually grew to groan when I would need to hack in the first game, I was always genuinely excited to find machines or cameras in part two. Addicted to chasing the extra items, or to get a turret on my side before a big daddy brawl. Now, after besting a big daddy in battle, you have the option to adopt a little sister as your own. You can harvest her on the spot for a quick atom payout, you monster, or take her to a few corpses to harvest more. That's significantly less morbid. Once you set her down to start the reaping, a wave battle will commence, and it's up to you to protect her until she's finished. These battles never lasted too long, and are initially pretty cool. Hidey hole. Thank you. However, by the end of the game, I was sick and tired of harvesting and battling, and just wanted to tell the little sisters to go get my damn beer, you freaking morons! In Bioshock 2, however, the big daddies aren't the only metal suit-clad rapscallions that Rapture has on offer. You also have to do battle with the titular big sisters. A creation of Dr. Lamb, the sisters are combat scenarios that spring up at set points in the storyline and are much faster and more agile than the lumbering big daddy variants, and they scream like their candidate just lost. These clashes are initially very intense, and the cast of characters do well to hype up the impending conflict. However, by the second skirmish, I had zero fear of them. And by the third time I heard that telltale screech, Dear God. Look, I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy. Sorry, a negative person of indiscriminate gender. These are just a few of my minor gripes with the game. The opening hour or so is slow, and the taunts you receive from Dr. Lamb get a little silly. At first, it's kind of novel and villainous for her to threaten you with a big preemptive taunt as her splicers descend upon you. After you leave dozens of corpses, several big daddies, and a few big sisters in your wake, however, you'd hope that the character would realize that she's not doing a great job at stopping your advance. You fucked up, huh? You fucked up, huh? You know your ass is doomed. Remonstration time. As mentioned earlier, I grew weary of the atom harvesting wave battles near the end of the campaign, and the big sister encounters lost their significance fairly quick. The map, as it was in the first game, is still about as useful as a stopped up butthole. In addition, this game desperately needs a sprint button. Nonetheless, for these gripes, I never got lost, and there is a gene tonic to help you move quicker, so I can't whine too much. Also, as a quick aside, back when Bioshock 2 launched, it came with a multiplayer mode, titled Fall of Rapture. It wasn't included in this remaster, and there is a reason for that. It sucked balls! I vividly remember enjoying the mode for the first few weeks after the game's launch. That is, until people learn the big, broken trick. 
Electro Bolt to stop you dead in your tracks, use the elephant gun, and you get a one-hit kill. People, being lemmings, adopted and abused this tactic. It was fucking stupid, and it ruined the entire experience. It was clearly attacked on mode, likely imposed by some douchey executive trying to capitalize on COD mania. Included in this edition, thankfully, are the Protector Trials and my Nervous Den DLC. The Protector Trials are, in essence, the wave battles from the story in which you protect a little sister while she harvests Adam. Except, now, you run through various trials on different maps pulled from the campaign. There are several trials for every map, each with their own set of predetermined weapon, plasmid, and tonic loadouts to add challenge. It's a fun distraction for a bit, but the lack of a sprint button, especially when you need to get back and forth to vending machines, and some annoying enemy variants in tight quarters, keep it from being little more. Hello there. Welcome to Minerva's Den, the home of Rapture's high technology. Minerva's Den, on the other hand, is a full-fledged single-player expansion. Set in 1968 Rapture, the player controls Subject Sigma, a big daddy tasked with recovering the Thinker. What steps into Minerva's Den? Potter's newest toy? He wants the Thinker for himself. Ah, but you see, old friend, the machine has chosen me. The story deals with a conflict between the two primary creators of the Thinker, C.M. Porter, a brilliant man brought to rapture after personal tragedy, and Reed Wall, who saw the potential of the machine for, quote, much more. I won't ruin it, but the tale told here is truly fascinating and worth experiencing. And the blitz starts falling. Next morning I came home to find nothing but ashes. Where I last saw her. Nothing but ashes. References to such real world tragedies as Adolf Hitler's Blitzkrieg are subtly referenced and interwoven with the storyline naturally, without the insulting, crayon drawn version of history we get pumped with nowadays. The acting of each character is excellent, especially CM Porter, voiced by Carl Lumley. It's not exactly shocking where the character goes, but the acting really sells the trip the character takes. Adam Harvesting returns, and again it gets a little repetitive, but there is a new toy to play with in the form of the Ion Laser. Basically a steady stream laser with a few ammo types to play around with. The weapon is fun, and it helps give Sigma a minor identity difference from Delta. Concerning Big Daddies, the Lancer is the most technically advanced Big Daddy that Rapture ever produced. Now it stands between you and the Little Sisters. And if there's anywhere that you'll need Adam to get by, it's Minerva's Den. One new enemy variation is added here, the Lancer. The model looks fucking sweet, and he uses the ion laser as well. All in all, combat is more or less identical to the core game, but that's not a bad thing. Besides, you really shouldn't play my Nervous Den solely for action. The story is fantastic and worth a good sip. All in all, a strong DLC and a highlight of the entire franchise. Subject Sigma rises above the pack, hmm? A futile gesture before the all-knowing thinker. In summary, you may be able to guess that I have an affinity for Bioshock 2. There's nothing that it does individually that makes you want to stand up and shout. Graphics, gameplay, sound, and even story are more or less on par with the first game. However, it does one thing that video games should always strive to do. It was immersive the entire time. At no point did I feel like I didn't want to be a part of Subject Delta's reunion with Eleanor, and the ending I got certainly gave me the carrot I had been chasing.
it's not a high speed, oh my fucking god, explosions, and the president is in danger, twitch fest. If you have a small attention span, don't bother. But, if you want an FPS that moves the needle into art territory, Bioshock 2 is an underrated classic that any self-respecting gorilla should seek out. Buy it. In ethical psychiatry, we must account for... <laughs> Eleanor Lamb speaking. Mom says I'm not to play with the other children because they're being raised on a diet of dog-eat-dog. -dog. I wanted to see these dog-eaters, so I waited until Mom was gone and went out to find one. And guess what? The dog-eaters wear human skin. It makes them look just like us. 